Hey everyone, this is Uthris. Welcome back to Let's Build Off Loria, episode 39. Um, I figured I'd give you guys this view to start off with. We don't really look out away from the town usually, so we can kind of see the overlying farmland and the fief off in the distance with the destroyed castle. It's a pretty nice view from the guard tower near the main farmland. It's definitely pretty nice. So last episode, we built two little houses to go with the little, um, well not little I guess, the, the, the new farmers, not farmers, fisherman's hut with a small dock and pier. So there's some additional foundations kind of surrounding the lake. These are just going to be some extra little farmhouses dotting the landscape. There's not going to be very uh, compact areas of buildings here so it's just, it's just gonna be a sparse kind of something to take up the open land the um, ways across onto that side are done by these little bridges that I made off camera and these are simply two triangle wooden supports and then handcrafted wooden beams holding up the plankings I think it looks pretty nice and it fits fairly well. It's just, you know, foot traffic, basic foot traffic goes across these. They wouldn't be carrying large supplies using these bridges. And there's two entrances, one on each side of the lake. And it, it's a little bit of secure, well, not really. Um, if, if This castle is pretty much guarding the bridge over there. So you don't have to worry about troops using that to bypass the castle because if they can get that close and use a bridge, they, they're they well capable of taking that point anyways, and they'll be on their way over here uh, nonetheless. And even if they come this way, eventually this is going to be sculpted to where it's going to be kind of blocked off by natural mountainside. So they wouldn't be able to attack that side of the wall anyways. They would still have to work their way up through here, and that would be a pretty tall order just by itself so defensively it's fine these bridges are just for basic foot travel as I said so over here we're going to be doing some basic terrain sculpting to lay out where the monastery is going to be built and so we're going to have a nice winding path and I went ahead and laid out kind of a basic shape of what we want and it will be accented by like little wooden steps and uh, stone steps here and there as well as you work your way up the mountainside to the monastery and it follows kind of a nice uh, meandering little path around and uh, up the landscape some parts are a little steep right now but I think that will be fixed with the occasional uh, corner staircase so we're gonna be doing a good bit of train sculpting this episode um, maybe getting to the point of laying out the foundation and basic size of the monastery itself and for most of my basic train sculpting I like to use this oblong uh, cylinder shape and I use this a lot to kind of sculpt out my my outer edges of terrain. So if we grab this stone tool, this is about the height that I think the floor is going to be at. And the way I usually find how tall the terrain should be is I try and lay a block down. And then I give just a little bit of space to act as a foundation gap like that. And from there, I can draw out lines. So, as you can see, that that way the foundation is not overly tall and it looks fairly accurate. Uh, another method I'll use for this is using the auto level. And I'll usually start out with a pretty small area for it. And then once I find the height that I want, you can just hold left click and drag out pretty much how big the area needs to be and then fill that in 
um, the vertical elements using that cylinder tool. So like here is going to be part of the abbey. So dormitory areas. I haven't really seen a picture of a monastery in a while. So it might not look 100% correct. But you know, I, I get the general gist of it as far as I can remember. And you know, if you guys think some things can change, just let me know and uh, maybe send me some links to some photos of ideas. And I can, it, it's just easier to implement if you guys send me photos as well. And you can just link that in the comments and it might get flagged as spam or whatever, but I'll just basically ignore it. I don't, I'm not one to sit here and even if it is spam to block any comments like it's freaking I just don't care and it's it's not a big deal it's uh it's just words you know so I think that is kind of the basic uh, shape we're gonna go with it's gonna have kind of a main entryway maybe a small courtyard in this area and that might wind up just a little bit more up the mountainside here you know notice I use the capsule for uh, these winding paths. I think it's it's way easier to do this than the actual um, level tool because I mean it's very fluid. Um, you just have to kind of fly slow, hold down left click, and you are on your way to just kind of carving out an extended path area like so. So we need to extend that and try and make this uh, flow onto this concrete a little bit easier. It's not really concrete, I guess it's rock. Same thing anyways. So let's just take some of it away. I went a little too, too far with it. So that'll start another winding path up to maybe the living area and from here we'll just grab another well, we need to lay down a block to represent foundation actually I already came up with a nice height uh, luckily you don't always get that so we'll just kind of drag this out and make it wrap around the mountain again and so this is how I did most of the train work with even just the the city itself because you know it was on a mountainside but we needed plateaus and so I would just drag these out bring them down and then drag them out again and once you drag the mountainside down you get these little plateaus that look pretty natural um, you might add some mid-level plateaus to just break it and make it look like it's supportive of the upper levels but um, that's a kind of a, a last touch detail because you don't know how big the buildings are going to be initially but then again sometimes if you start with that it kind of constrains your building naturally and it can look like it was actually built into the mountainside and sometimes that's better than just having a bunch of little flat surfaces because that can sometimes look fake if done incorrect or too much you find that a lot in minecraft at least on the servers that i played on uh, everyone seemed to just make a giant square, and uh, I always hated that. It was, it was just not aesthetically pleasing for me to have people just make boxes. Uh, I like, you know, organic building, modular buildings that look like they kind of naturally, like, grew from each other, and out of necessity, they added more room, uh, things like that. I find to be far more believable than just a giant flat area. Um, technically that critique would work on this tournament ground down there. It's a giant flat area. Um, eventually I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some, some bluffs, some uh, shallower uh, little, little cliff endings through here to break it up. Mm. But like this area here, how it's kind of like, oh, well, you know, it's just kind of a rolling hill with some some exposed rock 
rather than just a flat area. So that's what I'm going to be doing with the tournament area as well, I think. And, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to do some, some more train sculpting off camera and then come back and show you guys just the laying down of the foundations and where all the buildings are going to go. So I'll be right back. Hey everyone, we're back and I uh, did some extra terrain sculpting off camera. Laid out some basic foundation of just the perimeter of the courtyard for the monastery. Um, laid out some large foundation for the... <laughs> the... Uh, what is this? Oh, this is going to be the actual residential area uh, where all they sleep. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm rambling at this point. So, let's see, the courtyard, I'll probably do some grass work here in a second. And try and bring just a spot of green to this kind of gray mountainside. I think that'll be a pretty cool thing to do. And then maybe lay some foundations for maybe some gardens that they might have. Uh, or some basic farm-like things uh, for some herbs or something of the sort. So they'll have just a touch of green there. Um, it definitely just brings just a bit of liveliness to the mountainside. And what you can do, actually, I've finished the plateauing on the side here and it, it still looks a little man-made and so the, the next step after you get all this is you go back in and kind of do some more layers of like vertical elements uh, an example would be like going through and say this spot here might end up sloping down into that and that might zigzag around into there um, and you end up just kind of carving and adding into it just a little bit more uh, building up a bunch of layers and smooth transitions every now and then that way it just doesn't look completely ridiculous and flat so you can see how this plateauing effect on this side might look a little bit better already uh, this corner is obviously too sharp, so we just have to try and round that off and maybe bring in a vertical element, some type of jut that might come down like so. And you can see that looks a lot better than, say, the squared off sections. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So this huge foundation um, I decided to do something a little bit fancy in that way. It looks like it's actually kind of attached to the mountainside rather than um, The mountainside being kind of attached to itself like on the plateaued effect So this looks like they just kind of had to build this up to make extra room and it looks pretty imposing which is nice um, pretty grand up there Adding some wooden steps along the path and then the lower area, we're going to be using a lot of dirt to kind of mask and cover up some of the steps. And then we'll work some stonework and maybe some patches of grass on that as well. And then also what you can do is when you add the rock grass onto these flat bits here, you can go ahead and find areas that, yeah, this spot would might gather just a little bit more light than the rest. You can start plopping down just some extra bits of green. Not everywhere. Just, just have... Uh, a few spots and what that can do is, is just uh, bring from far from a distance a nice bit of color to your hillsides and plateaus big problem about doing this though is you'll see as the farther away we get the game is going to extrapolate the voxels and what's going to happen is all those plateaus are going to disappear and it looks like the pillars not connected to the ground anymore it is um, and sadly this is something that will uh, show up when you start walking towards it and trying to figure out hey what's up here it's going to start kind of filling in and about this distance is about a good viewing distance 
when you're away from the structure itself. I'm going to be adding uh, some some of these type effects on the wall itself. That way it's not completely flat. Maybe some wooden elements just to break up all the gray. I mean, it's this, this gray structure on this mountainside here. You need to build out the path that winds up to the residential area a little bit better. And then we're going to need to build up a path up here that will actually go up to the shrine. It's actually going to be carved into this mountainside. Um, it'll have a nice facade that's exposed with maybe a small battlement wall um, around it. Not really providing as much of a defensive purpose, but it's just going to be a, an extra little layer of detail that will be there. Um, coming into a grand facade, almost reminiscent of like a facade on a cathedral, just maybe a single tower and uh, some a bunch of pillar work is what I'm thinking into kind of a grand hall that's kind of carved into the mountain. It might look a little dwarven, but I mean, it, it's, it's a monastery, so you know, it, it'll have a little bit of a religious aspect to it, I guess. Um, let's see, let's see. Yeah. So we're, we're, I'm, I'm just gonna try and work a little bit more on these steps. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just finding spots that the logs can kind of sit in and recede into the terrain just a little bit. And what this will do is form natural um, fitting stairs that look like they've been there for a while and have become part of the mountainside just a little bit. I think that's all that needs really. Um, we'll go ahead and throw in some dirt, just to mark the path a little bit better. So they'll walk up here, work their way along this face. And then we'll just create these. Sometimes it's easier to paint the terrain by actually left clicking and having the voxels be redrawn and from distances that actually works better because if you paint just the top layer sometimes when it extrapolates the terrain it can uh, it, it thinks that painted layer is just really thin and so from from a distance it'll actually just show mainly what's underneath of it which is usually the rock in this case uh, sometimes it is the grass if you're building in a big grassy area. So we'll just keep expanding the dirt path all the way up. Occasionally left clicking to smooth some areas out so you can walk over it fairly nice. move this section out there and then there you go so you can kind of see the meandering path that we've made I don't know the, the stark contrast between just the dirt and the rocks looks a little weird at first but we'll start throwing in other textures to kind of make a, a smoother gradient We just need a path over this way, connecting that house like so. And then maybe a path like this that kind of walks by here. Zigzags through the field just a little bit. And there you go. But yeah, I think that'll do it for this episode. Next episode, we'll go ahead and work a little bit more on the monastery and hopefully finish that up. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.